Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? Uh, truly, it's a blessed morning to be here. Uh, I'm so happy that I was able to get up this morning, amen, and um, got up and got ready, amen. I'm excited about today. Um, I'm excited about what's going on. Uh, I'm excited about everything, uh, even though um, it's crazy, I'm still excited about God. And, and you think about God, that's enough. So today we're going to stick into our Amen. I, I I don't I don't know about you, but there are some things that we definitely can can do in, in regards to that, and um, definitely want to just go over a word with you this morning. I want to give you something that'll help you make it through the week. Uh, I want to give you something as you're in the house and um, in the house, and I would definitely want to give you something that's going to. To help you, uh, let's pray this morning. And now, before we pray, and then I would definitely want to get into the word. Uh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, just want to say thank you, thank you, Father God, for truly being so great and wonderful. And thank you, Father God, because we know that we could not have made it thus far without you. Thank you, Father God, for protecting us and keeping us and waking us up this morning, Father God. And we just want to give you praise and we just want to give you glory. And we just want to lift you up, mighty God, because you're still on the throne. And thank you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So let's go right into the word this morning. Uh, I'll be coming to you from the book of Acts. Amen. Acts 12 and 5, just one verse I, I want to give you, but uh, we'll unpack this later uh, today in the sermon. But it simply reads, and I'm coming from the uh, Good Word trans translation this morning. It says, so Peter was kept in prison, but the church was praying very hard to God for him. Let me repeat that. Peter was kept in prison, but the church was praying very hard to God for him. Woo. Amen. So I was thinking about this week and Friday as I was at work and getting ready to uh, go home and um, just mainly um, just trying to figure out uh, what am I do this weekend. And someone asked me the question, they asked, uh, what are you going to do this weekend? What are you going to do this weekend? And I uh, thought to myself, is there really anything to do? Amen. Uh, we can't even go to the restaurants and sit and eat. Amen. You, you can't even go into stores. And one of my things I love to do was go into Barnes and Nobles and hang out and pick up a book and read it while at Barnes and Nobles. Can't even do that anymore. And there's no sports on TV. And that's an issue all in itself for my fellows out there. Uh, no sports on TV. So um, I, I think thinking about it uh, at this point, I even take a frog racing if turtle racing. I don't care uh, as long as something with somebody's competing. Hey, Amen. So, so there's really nothing really going on out there. And the choices then are limited. Hey, Amen. The, the, the choices are, are, are limited. So uh, thinking about that and, and trying to figure out exactly what you're going to do. Hey, Amen. And just like Peter, some must feel like we're in jail right about now um, because you think about it, you got to be in the house at a certain time if you're in certain states, amen. And not only that, for those of you who are used to being out late, now you got to be home at a certain time. The barbershops are closed, the hair salons are closed, and a lot of us, uh, especially my, my, my ladies out there, uh, trying to figure out what you're going to do because you probably just got a manicure and a pedicure and 
days are passing by and now you figure that it's time for another one or maybe you just got your hair done and the time is coming up when it's time to get it done again and um, it's crazy because and before it used to be people used to sneak around to cheat but now people are going to be sneaking around uh, to get their hair done <laughs> so so it's it's a different day now it's a different day and everybody is stuck in the house you know, we're stuck in the house and uh, really not a lot of options not a lot of choices when you're in the house uh, so some of us then you know are getting tired i mean it's a tiresome thing because you're in the house and if you got a lot of kids in the house with you then that just doubles it up because you know kids get they get restless and they trying you know trying to figure out different things and jumping off of furniture and <laughs> doing all kinds of the stuff and and you're already getting beat down uh, just the fact that you're in the house and you really don't know uh when you, this is going to be lifted now you got to deal with these kids and it's crazy because it's the same thing every day amen you get up you do the same thing every day and it's it's I understand you can get bored when you're stuck inside. You can get bored when you're stuck inside without options, amen. When your choices are limited, you can get bored, amen. So so, so I understand that. So, so you feel as if uh, you're in jail and may I then suggest to you then that maybe the reason why some of us are stuck in the house maybe god is trying to tell us that we can be free while we're in the house yeah we we can be free while we are in the house amen it, it, it was a uh, timothy carney he's a phd he says when your choices are limited by someone else and you can't be who you want to be uh, at the nowhere else the goal point uh then in essence of who you are, it can really seem like you're being imprisoned or unfairly shackled. Amen. So uh, you know you're 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 stuck in the house, but you don't want to be in the house. Uh, so you feel as if you're shackled. But but maybe this is your opportunity to be free while you're stuck in the house. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to right there. Somebody, somebody, somebody is just trying to go and stay crazy, but maybe this is a time for you to free your mind and to free your life. Uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know. I, 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 wanna, I wanna talk to somebody this morning. Somebody might be saying, well, pastor, my life was already messed up before Corona. Yeah, let, let, let's be real this morning. You know, you're saying, well, my life was already messed up before this coronavirus. Uh, Pastor, I, I, I lost my joy way before corona came along. I, I, something happened in life and I lost my joy. I, I lost my peace, Pastor. I, I lost my peace. And uh, I'm trying to, and I want to get it back. Uh, my mind was already going crazy. Uh, this Corona thing is just another thing to push me over the edge, but my mind was already going crazy. I didn't know, uh, I didn't know what to expect. I, I didn't know how my life was going to be end up. Uh, I was going down the wrong path and my mind was going crazy. It, it, I didn't know what to do. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking, I'm talking to this morning. Uh, somebody said, well, you know, my money was already jacked up. Uh, now I lost my job, but my money situation was already jacked up. Amen. Um, I, I I I had bills before Corona, and I got bills during Corona. I got bills and bills and bills. My money situation was already jacked up, and now now my faith my faith was already low. Uh, I was already losing faith, and if you lose faith, uh, somebody lost hope. Hey, Amen. This is a long time ago before this Corona situation came. Uh, so, 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 so the thing is this then is that uh, um, I want to let you know then. It says not only are you stuck in the house, 
but you're also stuck in life. Uh, I don't know if you follow me on Facebook, but that's my afternoon word right there on a Sunday. Not only are you stuck in the house, but you're also stuck in life. Uh, somebody said, well, Pastor, uh, it's crazy. It's crazy out there, but it's also crazy in here. Woo! Mm, the world is going crazy. The world is falling apart out there, but I'm falling apart right here in my life. Uh, my life is in shambles. My, my life is going crazy. I, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to make it, Pastor. Uh, but I come to let you know that even though you're stuck on the inside, you can have access to the blessings on the outside. Uh, yes, you can. Mm. I just want to just talk to somebody this morning uh, just to let you know, let you know that there is a chance for you to be free. Amen. Now, 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 I know you may be saying that uh, couldn't get it right. I couldn't get it right before Corona. And now I definitely can't get it right during Corona. Amen. And your life seems like it's a merry-go-round. You're going around and around and around and you're trying to figure out when is the merry-go-round going to stop. Uh, you're trying to figure out when is the merry-go-round going to stop. You don't know who, how am I going to get off this merry-go-round. But, but maybe, maybe, the reason why you're stuck in the house. Maybe this corona thing, as crazy as it is, maybe just helps us because when you're on a merry-go-round, you're moving too much. Maybe now this is your opportunity to slow down and reassess your life. Hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's what it, maybe, maybe. So, so, this virus now, which has gotten us in the house right now, got us stuck in the house. Um, it's pretty much got us living like they did in the text uh, in Acts. It's pretty much got us living in the text. Um, let me let me just give give you some some background here so you understand what's going on uh, when we read about Peter uh, in jail and how the church prayed. I'm going to read Acts 12, 1 and 3. It says, it was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to prosecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with, a, with the sword. Uh, when he saw this, and he saw that it met the approval of the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. Herod, he was a ruler at the time, man. Uh, he really had no really thing in regards to the religion of the Jews, but I assume that the, the, the Pharisees probably got into his ear and they had situations going on because there was this fellow, uh, this guy who I'm sure some of you probably heard of, his name was Jesus. He came and he pretty much turned the world upside down when he came because he came speaking a different type of language. He came, uh, providing a different type of revelation. He, 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 was, he was coming and he was saying things uh, that was against the norm. Amen. So, so, so the people who were traditionalists, they couldn't handle it. They couldn't handle this new thing that he was preaching. <clears throat> so Jesus came and he turned the world upside down. Oh, that makes me think about this Corona thing, this coronavirus. It's turning the world upside down. <clears throat> but the only difference is that Corona comes to kill. But Jesus says, I'm coming to give you life. Uh, the only thing is that Corona is coming to make you bound. Uh, but Jesus says, I'm coming to free you. Corona's coming to make you sick. Mm, but Jesus says, I'm coming to heal. Uh, because don't you remember the woman who was who had the issue with the blood? So all she had to do was touch the hem of his garment and she was made whole again. So now we find that there's this whole group of believers uh, who are believing on Jesus and they're preaching Jesus. 
preaching Jesus. And I feel like today we need more people preaching Jesus. Woo! We need more people preaching about Jesus today. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but somebody needs to hear about the wonder working power of Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't care how much they prosecute you, how much they talk about you, but you need to be preaching about Jesus. Mm, I don't know. Is there anybody uh, listening to me this morning on this on this feed? Uh, you know that it was nobody but him, the almighty God, that brought you through when you was down. If you know it was nobody but God that made a way out of no way. Uh, let me know. Hit me up and said like, because I like that. Because uh, you know that it was Jesus who brought you through. So they were preaching Jesus and they were preaching something that was different. And the, the Jews, the, 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 the religious leaders of the day didn't like it because they were used to tradition. They were used to rules and regulations. They were used to how things used to be. But how many of you know that when Jesus comes into your life, it's never the way it used to be? Ah, because he comes to make your life better. Mm. So we find now and then that these people were preaching. And now... Uh, here's King Herod, and he's prosecuting the believers. Amen. This is people were being prosecuted, and some even lost their lives. Uh, case in point, James. James got, he lost his life uh, for the sake of the gospel. Amen. And how many of you are willing to lose your life for the sake of the gospel? And the text simply says then that uh, when he killed, when he killed, uh, James, that the the church or the the, the 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 Jews were happy, got their approval. So he says, since I'm trying to get popularity, as politicians often do, uh, he says, well, this is what the people want. I'm going to give them what they want. And then he proceed to seize Peter also. Mm. He proceeded to seize, seize Peter also, but he did not kill Peter. Let me let me just go through the the, the the chapter here. You can read it later, Acts uh, chapter 12. The reason why he did not kill Peter was because it was during the time of the Passover. Woo. He wanted to wait until after the Passover was over. Now, for those of you who heard me last week, you remember I was talking about putting the blood on the doorposts and the death angel would see the blood and it would pass over the blood. So I'm thinking about that and I just can't let this go. The blood is all about the blood. Amen. Because it was the blood on the doorpost that kept them alive then. And it was that blood that kept Peter alive then. Amen. Because if there was no Passover, uh, then he would, Herod would have killed Peter. But because of the Passover, because of the blood, kept him alive. And I don't know about you, but there's blood keeping us alive today. Yeah, there, there's blood blood keeping us alive today. And I know somebody's probably saying, I thought he was done with the blood last week. I thought he was done talking about the blood last week. Uh, but I, I want to let you know, because I can't forget about the blood because the blood has never forgot about me. Uh, is there anybody in the house this morning listening to me? Uh, you can say it was the blood that, that made me clean. Uh, uh, I was addicted to drugs. I was licking, drinking alcohol. I, I, I was dealing with sex demons, uh, but the blood brought me through. Uh, is there anybody in on the stream this morning? Uh, if you can help me this morning, if you can shout it in your house or you can comment below, just simply say the blood of Christ. Uh, the blood of Christ brought me through. It brought me through. Uh, it kept me when I couldn't keep my stuff. Oh, uh, it, it, it made me, it made me not go out and kill somebody because it was the blood 
that kept me. And I don't know about you, but I just can't let it go because the blood, oh, the blood, Woo! the blood, the blood, the blood. Yes, the blood of Christ has power. It has power. Amen. So we find that Herod locked up Peter too. And now this is where we find our text in chapter five. Peter's locked up. He, he was in prison. But the text says that the church was praying very hard to God for him. Woo! The church. I want to talk about the church for a little bit here. The church. The church is not the building, nor is the church only 1,000, 200, 300 people. The church is simply a body of believers. The Bible does not say how many believers make up the church. All it, all it simply is is a body of believers. So I want to talk to those this morning who are in the house. And if you're with another believer, then you are in church this morning. Woo! You are in church this morning. You got to understand the situation that they were going through because they were being hunted. They were being killed. They were being prosecuted. So they had to stay inside. Woo! And, and that makes me think about Corona being prosecuted, we're being attacked by this virus, is keeping us on the inside. But even though they were in this inside, it says the church was praying very hard. They didn't know when they left outside if it was going to be the last time alive. They, they didn't know if they were going to be prosecuted. They didn't know where the enemy was. And that's how it is today. We don't know where the germ is, where the virus is. Uh, but it says that while they were inside the house, they were praying very hard. And I got a question for you this morning. I want to know how hard do you go when it comes to God? How hard do you go? Woo! How hard did you go? How hard do you go when it comes to God? Amen. They were inside praying, praying hard because they wanted Peter to be released from prison. They didn't have the power to physically go get Peter, but they knew about the power of prayer. So in all actuality, they were stuck in the house while their blessing was on the outside. The enemy had their blessing Captive, but they were still praying in the house. So the question becomes is what are you going to do when you're stuck in the house? Your options are limited. May I suggest this morning that maybe we ought to pray a little bit more. Maybe. We ought to pray instead of instead of watching that old TV series on television. Maybe we ought to pray instead of binge watching on Netflix or strolling through social media. Because I declare this morning that if the church would pray, things will begin to happen. Let me jaywalk to the end here. They were praying while Peter was locked up. They were praying while Peter was locked up. They were praying while they were stuck and what they wanted was locked up. They were praying. So as they were praying, if you read the rest of the, of, the, of the chapter, you'll find that God sends an angel to free Peter. Woo! 
So as they were praying hard, as they were praying unrelentlessly, God sends an angel to release Peter. Maybe we missed it the first time and James died. But now God has given us another time to come together and pray. Maybe we missed it on 9 11. But now God has given us another chance to pray. He said, I need you to, to pray. Because when you pray, prayer moves God. So as they're praying, God is releasing Peter. So as you're praying, God is releasing your blessing. As you're praying, God is releasing your joy, your peace, your love, your strength, your power. Because there's power in prayer this morning. So as the angel releases Peter, we find that Peter makes his way to the house. Amen. And we find that when Peter goes to the house, it says when Peter realized what happened, he went to the home of Mary, the mother of John, Mark. Many people had gathered at the house and were praying. It says Peter knocked on the door of the entryway and the servant named Rhonda came to answer. So as they were praying, Peter was knocking. <laughs> As they were praying, Peter was knocking. While they were stuck on the inside praying, the blessing was knocking on the door. And I want to come to let somebody know this morning, don't stop praying because after a while, your blessing will be knocking at the door. Amen. And we find that the people told the the girl, because she was so excited, she didn't open the door. She went back and told the people uh, that Peter was knocking at the door. And they were like, you're crazy. Other words, they were saying, I cannot believe it. But the little girl, she said that she kept insisting that Peter was at the door. They said, well, it must be his angel. But Peter kept knocking. Woo! He kept knocking. And when he opened the door, they were shocked to see him. Peter kept knocking because when God releases a blessing on your life, it's going to keep on knocking until you open up the door. Oh, Jesus said, for those who knock, the door will be open. And I've come to let you know this morning that you, I don't know what it is that's stuck on the outside, something, something that you can't get access to. Maybe it's your joy. You lost your joy and the enemy's got your joy this morning. Maybe it's your happiness. You don't, you don't have your happiness anymore. Maybe it's your peace. Maybe it's your love. Maybe it's your strength. Maybe it's your power. I've come to let you know that even though you're stuck on the inside, Physical lead that prayer has the power to seep through the walls and, and bring back the very thing that you lost. And I want to know this morning, is there anybody on the stream this morning if you can be a witness like me and say there's power? in prayer. Uh, it was prayer that changed my life. It was prayer that gave me strength. It was prayer uh, that made ways out of no way. It was prayer that brought me through when I didn't know how I was going to make it. It was prayer. It was prayer that opened up the door. Prayer that kept me every morning, kept me in the evening, uh, kept me when, uh, when I, I may have been surrounded by Corona. I don't even know when where is that? But prayer kept me. It, it, it kept me and it kept me. And is there anybody on the stream this morning if you can be a witness with me and just uh, holla, hallelujah and glory be to God because prayer will get you to where God wants to give you. Prayer 
will get you to where God wants to give you. They were stuck in the house and they could not make it out. Just like today, we don't know where this coronavirus is. We don't know who has it, who touched what. It's crazy because you're going out and you don't really know. Is this the time or the moment where I get it? Yeah. But perhaps, maybe if we pray more, yeah, pray more, maybe things will begin to happen in our lives. And for those of you who feel as if before Corona, I was already messed up, Pastor. So this is nothing new to me. I'm already, my life's already messed up. I want to give you some words of encouragement this morning and let you know then that God, Jesus, he is a life changer. And no matter what goes on in your life, he can change it. Yes, he can. He can change it. If you just trust and believe him, come to him with an open heart, God can change it. Amen. Many people are dying today. Many people are sick. And if that is you this morning, I've been praying for you. Every day, every night, I'm praying for you. But for those of us who are healthy and you're at home and getting crazy and you're, you're getting upset, maybe take that time, that moment to speak to God for a little bit. Because there are some things that are on the outside that God wants to give you on the inside. I'm not talking about material things. Hey man, because you can go to Walmart right now and pick up any material thing you want because they open. Yeah. I'm talking about the things that are on the inside. Stuck on the inside, which means you can't even get out of your life. You keep getting in the way of your life and stuck on the inside and you're, you're getting bitter and you don't really know if you can continue on. Pray. Yeah. Pray. Talk to God. I feel it in my spirit this morning. Pray. Talk to God. Don't ask on Facebook. Don't talk to your friends or your family. Talk to God this morning. And I can declare that God will make a way. Amen. Let's be blessed. Let's be blessed and let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, for everyone out there who listened live on Facebook, YouTube, or wherever. We pray, Father God, that you would touch them and give them the mindset, Father God, to go hard for you and everything they do. And as we are all at home, Father God, help us and draw us closer to you in your word and just talking to you, Father God, just like we would talk to our friends every single day, Father God, make talking to you also and have it that we all get into, Father God, so you may bring forth, Father God, the very things that we have lost along the way the very things that life has stripped from us, Father God, we pray that you would bring it all back. Give us back joy because somebody's, Father God, is facing and fighting depression this morning. Give us back strength, Father God, because somebody lost all their strength and have given up on life this morning. We pray, Father God, that you give it back to us in the name of Jesus. Holy Asali Apoko. And let the power of the Holy Ghost have his way, Father God in this earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, guys, uh, it's been a blessing. I love you guys. Uh, and I just wanted just to talk to those of you who are out there who don't have a church home and in your spirit, in your heart, you're saying that, you know, this is the place I want to be when this is all over and we meet again. And this is a place I want to connect to. Um, I can really relate to the pastor. I can um, I feel love the love uh, because I definitely want you to feel the love. 
if you would, could you just text yes join one to eight four five seven six? Amen. To join us. Amen. This is our virtual invitation out to you. Amen. And and when you text it, and once we get your phone number, your email, um, I personally will be calling you to just welcome you in with open arms. Amen. Because House of Refuge, what we're all about is we're about loving you, caring for you. Amen. And we're, we're about just loving on you and loving on you and loving on you until we can't love you no more. Amen. So we pray, I pray that you would just text yes, join one to eight, four, five, seven, six um, to join us. Um, and we'll connect on the phone first. Uh, I always like to connect because I'm a hugger and we, we like to hug and love on you, but can't be the case now. We'll connect on the phone and then when the time comes, um, we'll officially welcome you into the family and we'll love on you. For those of you who are out there and you feel like you're alone. You feel like I, I need somebody. I, I need a, a group of people to show me love. Ask that you text. Amen. And I promise you, we will love you to death. Amen. We will love you. We'll love you until we can't love you anymore. Amen. So just text that there. Amen. So listen, guys, I'm about to go and I love you. But before I go, I, I just want to. Um, Ask those of you who can, for those of you who can't, I understand. And, um, and those of you who have a church home, I want you to give to your churches. Amen. Uh, I want you to bless your churches because that's where uh, your, your your home is. Amen. But for those of you who are members and those of you who are not members and uh, you were blessed in, by the sermon and you believe in what we do, we believe in helping the community. We believe in blessing people. Uh, we believe in that. Um, I pray then that you would give and I'm going to uh, sign off. But before I do, I want to give you our, our, our different ways of giving. And if you could just just bless us this morning um, so that we can continue on with the, the good fight of faith and we can help those who may be losing their job and who may need some food and who may be needing uh, uh, various things. Um, because um, there was something that my pastor, Mike McGurr, said. Um, he said, the community needs the church, but the church needs you. Amen. Let me say that again. The community needs the church, but the church needs you. So in order for us to impact the community, you got to impact the church. Amen. So amen. So I'm going to bring this up and listen, everyone have a blessed day. I love you. Uh, if you need me, you just call the church number. I'm there for you. For those of you who uh, want to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can go into our website, our Facebook page, and uh, houseofrefuge.com or houseofharfolk.com and our, 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 our Facebook page is houseofrefuge.com. I would love to talk to you. Hey, Amen. If you got questions about the, the Bible, about the sermon, give me a call. Hey, we, we'll talk about it. Uh, hey, I, I would love to talk to you. So until so next Wednesday, God willing, Wednesday, we're going to be back, Lord's willing, and going about facing your giants, because all of us got giants we got to face. And uh, I'm excited about it because we're going to talk about another giant that they faced that some of you probably didn't know he had another giant that he had to face. But we, we'll go over that on Wednesday. So be blessed. Love you. Um, and Lord's willing, next week, we make change up this, this, this uh, stream a little bit different, make it make it feel like a little, little bit more churchy. Uh, we'll see, but be blessed. And uh, so I'm going to put the, the ways to give on, on online here. Um, so if you could, you could cash app us or you can, um, or you'll see. Amen. So be blessed.